Okay, so now we're actually going to look at our first math video. Not that the other one wasn't a math video. That's not exactly what I meant. I meant now we're going to start looking at our first video where we've got uh, some PDE stuff going on. Of course, now I've got to get back to the right thing. Okay, um, so the simplest linear PDE. So this is a very simple first order PDE, but analyzing it is really going to give... Um, Analyzing this very simple PDE is going to show how we're going to analyze other PDEs. So it's a very simple PDE, but there's a sort of kernel of whatever here that's going to sort of direct us to see how we're going to analyze other PDEs. Okay, so we're going to have lambda times the partial derivative of some unknown function u with respect to x plus gamma plus the derivative of u with respect to y is equal to zero. So let me just tell you what this means. Lambda and gamma, these are two given numbers. These are two given real numbers. They could be complex, but we're just going to assume they're real, but they're given. They're three and four, or whatever they are. u is an unknown function. So we know that lambda times a partial derivative of u with respect to x plus gamma times a partial derivative of u with respect to y is equal to zero. And we want to solve this differential equation. So why is it called a partial differential equation to begin with? So why is it called partial a partial differential equation? So why is it called a PDE? Well, it's called a PDE. Uh, sorry, I'm going to need to need to make this go down to one. Okay, so it's called a PDE because it is an equation. It's an equation that relates. an unknown function u and its partial derivatives. It is an equation that relates some unknown function u and its partial derivatives. And the basic idea, just like an ordinary, so an ordinary differential equation, what is an ordinary differential equation? It's an equation that, that uh, relates, <clears throat> excuse me, that relates an unknown function and its ordinary derivatives. That's because in ordinary differential equations, the functions that we look at are just functions of one variable. U is now a function of two variables. So a differential equation involving U is going to represent, have necessarily going to involve its partial derivatives, not just its ordinary derivatives. And just like in ordinary di differential equations, what we want to do is we want to determine which equations or which functions satisfy this equation. Now remember, so think back again to first order ordinary differential equations. When you solved one of those, you always got this unknown constant, this C, this parameter C that was based on sort of like the initial value. Okay, if you, you had a differential equation, if you had just a differential equation, you couldn't figure out that C. But if you knew the value of the solution at some point, then you could figure out the C. Something similar is going to happen with PDEs, except it's going to be much more complicated. Okay, so right now we have an equation involving U and its partial derivatives. The first question that we want to ask is, what functions satisfy this equation? There's going to be a whole family of functions that satisfy this equation. So what we want to do here is, is we want to sort of look at this as a directional derivative. Indeed, we can write the left-hand side as the gradient of u. We can write the left-hand side as the gradient of u dotted with this vector lambda gamma. That's the left-hand side, and so this is equal to zero. Um, this vector right here is sometimes called the characteristic direction. And hopefully my handwriting on this will get better. But it's a little bit difficult for me now. This is called the characteristic direction. And what this is saying is that along lines that are parallel to the vector lambda gamma, we should say along curves parallel to the vector lambda gamma, but lambda gamma are constant. So along lines that are parallel to the vector lambda gamma, the solution is constant. So if u satisfies this PDE, then along lines parallel to the vector lambda gamma, u is constant. So let's let's talk a little bit more about this. 
Okay, so let's think through this. What is a generic formula for a line that is parallel to lambda gamma? So I'm going to talk about this in a couple of ways. Um, so kind of the first way that we might want to think about this, I want this to also go down to a smaller size as well. Um, so one way that we might talk about this is the slope, if it's parallel to lambda gamma, we know the slope. So I can think in terms of, of, of slope, slope, you know, just y equals mx plus b. If the slope is equal to gamma over lambda, then if I want to think about a generic line, I can write it as y is equal to gamma over lambda times x minus x naught, okay? And so this is going to be, x naught is going to be the x-intercept. Okay, and if I re rearrange this, I can write this uh, as gamma over lambda times x minus gamma over lambda times x naught. And I can rearrange this and write it as y minus gamma over lambda x is equal to some constant. Okay, because gamma over lambda times x naught, that's just a constant as far as x and y are concerned. Okay, and so what this is saying, so let, let's just think about that. So one way we can write the lines this way. So that's method one to think about how we can write the lines. Um, another way that we can think about the lines is we can think in terms of vector parameterizations. So, I've got x of t, y of t. Okay, I can parameterize this um, using this vector lambda gamma. And the first component is going to be x naught plus lambda t. And the second component is going to be y naught plus gamma t. Uh, where x naught and y naught are just some point on the line. And if I want to make it like I have up here, I'm going to make this sort of starting point going to be the x-axis. So if I look at this line, the starting point is going to be the x-axis, um, and x naught is going to be the x-intercept. Okay, and just pictorially what's going on here. Um, this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. For every x naught, I'm going to have a different line parallel to the vector lambda gamma. And we're going to look at, at specific examples with a specific vector lambda gamma and stuff like this. But just for every point on the x-axis, I'm going to have a unique line going through it that's parallel to the vector lambda gamma. And I know that on each one of these lines, u is going to be equal to some constant. So u is constant here. Um, u is equal to some constant here. It's equal to a constant on this line and a constant on this line and so on and so forth. Okay, so how can I use this information to help me find a solution to the PDE? Well, what I know is the following, the level sets. So these are the level sets for the solution. Remember what a level set is. A level set is a set on which your function is constant. So u is a function of two variables. The level set is going to be the sets on the level sets of u are going to be the sets on which u is constant. So I know the level sets are given by these lines. So the level sets the level sets have the form. They're the values of x and y such that x or sorry, y minus gamma over lambda times x is equal to some constant. Okay, and for every constant, we're going to get a different level set. Okay, so what this means, if I know that u is constant along these lines, then let's just think about this. This means that my function has to be of the form u of x, y is equal to some f of y minus gamma over lambda x for some function
for some function f. And again, we're, we're, we're not again, but we're going to assume that f is continuous and its derivatives are continuous and all of that. So why do I say this? Well, if y minus lambda over gamma x is equal to some constant, then this is just going to be some constant. And so u of x, y is going to be f of that constant. And so this says that as long as y minus lambda over gamma x is equal to constant, u of x, y is going to be a solution to this PD. Can we can actually, I don't think I have, okay, so um, let me add a page here. And what I can actually do is I can, I want to verify that this actually is a solution uh, to the PDE, okay? So my, my, my proposition here is that u, oops, is that u of x, y equals f of x, minus gamma, uh, sorry, this is y minus lambda over gamma, y minus lambda over gamma x. I'm assuming, my, my claim is that this is a solution to the PDE, and I, want, I want, and I want to show that now. So in other words, I just want to compute lambda times a partial derivative of u with respect to x plus gamma times a partial derivative of u with respect to y. Okay, so now I'm gonna use a chain rule. F is a function of these two variables. What is the derivative of F with respect to u? So actually, let me, let me just write that. So this is gonna be uh, the partial derivative of F with respect to x plus gamma times a partial derivative of y, uh, sorry, the partial, deriv partial derivative of F with respect to y. So this is lambda. Now, the derivative of f with respect to x, this is going to be equal. Well, I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to use the chain rule here. So it's going to be the derivative of the inside with respect to x, which is minus uh, minus gamma over lambda times. Well, let's think about what's going on here. Ah, sorry, this doesn't look like I want it to. So this is uh, gamma over lambda. And by the chain rule, this is going to be times f prime of gamma, sorry, y. So my y's and gammas look alike. That's not, that's not so helpful. They usually don't, but when I'm writing with this thing, they do. f prime of gamma over lambda x and then plus gamma now the derivative of f with respect to y is going to be the derivative of the inside part with respect to y which is just one then f prime again this is just the chain rule so i'm thinking about when i do the derivative with respect to x i'm thinking or sorry the derivative with respect to y i'm thinking about x as being constant and so now it's like f is just a function of this y variable and i'm doing the normal chain rule so f prime of y minus gamma over lambda x. Okay, now what's going to happen over here? Well, the lambdas cancel, and I'm going to have minus gamma f prime. And when I say f prime, we're thinking about, so f is a function of one variable, so f prime just means it's normal one variable derivative, but we're evaluating it at the point y minus gamma over lambda x. And then over here, the one is just one. So this is going to be plus gamma times F prime of Y minus gamma over lambda X. And we've got minus gamma F prime plus gamma F prime, and that's equal to zero. And so it shows that you define this way, as long as we can, as long as the derivatives of F, uh, as long as the derivative of F is continuous, um, you uh, define this way actually is a solution. <clears throat> okay, but this is all that we can say at this point because we don't know any other information about u. We don't know what u is at any point. We don't have like an initial condition, something corresponding to an initial condition. So at this point, all that we can say is that if u satisfies the PDE, then it has to have this form right here. And we'd have to have, we'll see in upcoming videos, we need to have some additional piece of information to actually tell us what F is, to actually give us a formula for what F is.
Okay, that's it for this video. This is the first solution method. Um, we're going to learn a next solution method. The solution method we learn in the upcoming video and the next video is really going to be how we think about a lot of these problems.